One of the issues that keeps us awake at night is the availability of key skills. And so what does one do to find or create those key skills? Um, it, it appears that most CEOs agree that the best way to gain <coughs> those skills is by creating them yourself. And that means investing in the necessary training, development, and upskilling programs for your own people. However, um, you will see in the results that that does come with risks. Um, and what I mean by that is the more you train and upskill your people, the more difficult it becomes to retain those people because they become more attractive to the broader market um, and they become more mobile and dynamic um, as members of the workforce. On this particular slide, um, we look at four key forces um, that are driving the upskilling uh, imperative globally. Um, the first one is the increasing rate of automation uh, with the advent of the fourth industrial revolution. And here we look at the expected impact um, and on various level employees of more automation um, over the next uh, couple of years, uh, taking into 2030 and beyond. Um, the second force that we look at is again the decrease in talent availability um, that I spoke of earlier. The third force is the decreasing mobility of skilled labor um, and what's happening in various markets um, around the world. Um, and then lastly, uh, we add on to that uh, a, demographics, um, and a demographic and, and population analysis uh, and the impact of aging talent pools around the world um, with regions such as Europe facing this problem of aging populations contrasting a region like Africa where we have the youngest population. Um, so if we start with the first one, um, you can clearly see um, that you know, the impact of automation is expected to be um, least uh, in the next couple of years, the early 10 to 2020s. Um, and the more um, you go into the 2020s, that impact certainly becomes more pronounced. Um, and that becomes more apparent, particularly when you look at um, the low education and the medium education jobs. Um, that is where we face a real risk of people being replaced by automation and uh, by machines, which again does not bode well for overall employment, particularly in a country such as us, as South Africa. Then on the second one, um, decreasing talent availability. Uh, this graph um, analyzes what is happening to unemployment um, and so whilst the trend suggests that globally um, more and more people are becoming unemployed we of course know that it is very different in our country um, but globally it still does present a risk for CEOs in that there isn't uh, there's a lower and lower number of people with key sk skills that CEOs are looking for um, that become available and of course those key skills that CEOs are looking for um, are extremely hard to find. Um, skills such as um, emotional intelligence, uh, soft skills, skills that are difficult to teach or automate, those that are actually the skills that are few and far in between. Um, then on the third uh, pillar there, um, we show uh, a de the decreasing mobility of skilled labor, um, and that's through the question, is cooperation amongst governments um, and businesses leading to greater movement um, of skilled labor between markets um, and you can clearly see there the varying percentages um, that are being achieved in various markets around the world um, and contrasting that between 2015 and 2020. Um, most of those markets um, except Africa and Asia Pacific showing an increase uh, between 2015 and 2020 um, and a region such as North America um, being um, as, as high as 75% um, uh, and of course the, the, the results of this particular question uh, we are showing those that said no um, uh, there, there hasn't been decreasing uh, mobility. On the aging talent um, the pop population um, ages um, of 65 um, and above definitely have increased over time um, in various countries around the world uh, and this has real implications for governments in various countries um, around the world um, about how um, 
um, whether there are enough people to, to man future jobs and exactly how those aging populations with people living longer will be maintained um, in various countries. If we um, analyze what CEOs are doing um, in, in the more mature talent pool countries um, and, and, and look at you know, how they are responding uh, with regards to what they need to be doing in upskilling their people, uh, the type of programs uh, that they are investing in, you actually get quite a surprising picture. Um, so here we try and delve into two questions in particular. Um, the first one is how much progress has your organization made in establishing an upskilling program that develops a mix of soft, technical and digital skills? And here we only show the responses for significant progress. The second question is which of these, um, which, of, which, which of these is the most important uh, to close a potential skills gap that you have currently in your organizations? Um, and the options there that are given are hiring from outside my industry, um, as well as establishing a strong pipeline for <coughs> education and training um, of my, my, my own um, workforce. Um, so last year we did see um, that the majority of CEOs uh, agreed that significant retraining and upskilling is the most important way to close the skills gap that has been identified. Yet, when you look at this year's survey results, um, globally, um, it shows that fewer than one in five leaders um, say that significant progress has been made. Um, so even though CEOs know what the problem is, know what needs to be done, uh, there has been insufficient progress that's been made. Um, and in a market like South Africa, um, that figure is as low as uh, 6%. Um, as compared to the global average of 18%. Um, and so if you, if you then compare the regions um, of which countries have made significant progress, interesting to see that North America um, ranks so lowly between 0 and 12% um, as opposed to a region such as the Middle East, um, which is uh, almost at 32%. Um, Africa being somewhere in the middle there, um, but clearly you can see that um, establishing and getting off the ground these upskilling programs is not as easy um, as what it seems. Um, and the commitment of CEOs to actually get this done um, hasn't been as high as what we expected.